Hey guys, so we are just going to do a little story time, okay? And I'm going to share a couple of things. I'm sure you read the title and was just like, really? Or, you know, however you responded, because it's just like, what? <laughs> but I'm going to share the how, the why, the what, all of that, you know? And um. Yeah, just share this experience that I've experienced, you know, and maybe somebody needs this, to hear this, to um, see this within their lives for themselves, you know, or however. So we're going to start from the beginning, but like all the way back in the beginning, like 2011 beginning, all right? So, okay, so... It's crazy how dark it is. I'm sitting in front of a window. It is summertime, but we've been having rain off and off for like the past two weeks or so. That's really interesting because the summer, was it that summer? It wasn't, it was the summer before. Anyways, so in 2011, on my 22nd birthday, Uranus had went was in Aries. It was at one degree Aries. So at this time, a lot of things were changing for me, shifting internally more so. And it wasn't until like two years later that that shift actually started happening happening outside of me. In the process of all of this, um, I guess you can call this an awakening. Um, it wasn't necessarily Jupiter's doing. I think it was me more so than anything, being tired of, of life, living the way I was living. I've talked about this in my video that's on my YouTube channel about my spiritual journey. <laughs> and so, and it's interesting because where I'm going to go with all this, I even mentioned that. And in it, I was like, oh, you know, it's helped me so much and yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, I was still having the feelings that I have now about it, right? So we're going to carry on, though. So time went by, and I started getting into a lot of different things, um, food changes, spirituality changes, um, just looking at life a lot differently, reading a lot of different books and taking a lot of different courses, getting certified in things. And that was between like 2012 and 2014 that all this was going on. And, but this was all in me attempting, I guess in, in a sense, trying to fix myself, thinking that something was wrong. Um, when that's a whole thing in itself, right? Because I got on this, this whole path to um, connecting more with myself and um, seeing how much of myself that I was just not aware of, you know, but at the same time, I've always had a very strong sense of self-awareness and just kind of not cared about how I was showing up in that sense of self, you know, just being like, I don't care, <laughs> you know, having just this, this attitude. So but at the same time, not, you know, because I'm sure somebody outside of me would see it differently, but there will probably be someone outside of me who did see it this way, right? And it seemed that um, I took on a lot more of the negative things um, that I heard people mention to me, say about me, and, and really let that affect me, my sense of self-worth and value personally right but also it affected me on an ego basis you know because I'm a Leo rising my son is in Aries the sun rules Leo is exalted in Aries right so when a planet is in an ex exaltation that means it operates better than it would in its home sign in a sense all right and it's these energies are trying one another. So very benevolent, very easy for me to be me, very easy for me to be in my ego, right? And not really be aware of it. Um, like I never really realized how 
much um, value I placed in my beauty and everything like that. Not that women don't do that naturally, but it was it was on a um, line of kind of ego. <laughs> So through all of this, over this time, I started building up like this whole psychological um, health situation with my body, you know, and really just, um, you know, <laughs> it, it was weird. It, it turned in, it really turned into a life of its own. Um, it went from something small to something very big and uh, it, it really transformed the way in which it is that I really began to see and perceive myself and connect with myself, you know, and really um, value love, even myself, you know, and also just feeling like, um, you know, people have their opinions. When you go, you, you just show up one day and be like a totally different person, you know, people people have whatever things it is that they have to say about the choices it is that you choose to make, especially when it's very different from what it is that they're used, used to you, you know, but we are not, we're not obligated to stay the same for anybody, right? And I think people, um, that's something like even on a collective level that, well, that this is like a collective kind of injury situation that don't nobody have to do anything for you. <laughs> be anyone for you, you know, do anything for you, anybody, no one is responsible for you outside of you, you know, and I come at this place of being responsible, come from this place of being responsible for a lot of, for others, right, not that, um, it's not something that I need to do in order to feel value, but it's something that I just do, that's just who I am, I'm, I'm, I, I see, even before any of this whole coming into this space of, of my, my gifts, my um, knowing of self, I've always seen that sometimes I have good answers for people, <laughs> good solutions for people, you know, and um, everybody was used to that. And, and that, that shit changed. Like I, I changed me. I changed how I was showing up. I changed who I was being. I changed what I was into, you know, cause life went from, you know, going out all the time, being with my friends, hanging out, you know, getting fucked up all the time to, well, let me go read this book. <laughs> let me go take this class, you know, um, let me go see what somebody has to teach me. What can I learn? You know, so I ended up, I, I took a lot of courses and in the midst of these courses, um, like I had a friend of mine who she would share different things with me. And that's how I ended up uh, going through the whole Sacred Woman Rites of Passage because the school that I was going to for detox therapy, the, the facilitator of the program, she held a Rites of Passage for Sacred Woman. So I took that. Because, you know, I was trying to connect with myself in every way possible that I could. And that was one, you know, being in my feminine, connecting with my sacred feminine wisdom, my sacred feminine energy. And that in itself, you know, a lot of things are built and cultivated through a sense of or understanding of the dogma. Right. As in if this is the way it should be, if it's not this way, then it's not right. And that's not necessarily the case because we are all such individual people, you know, and I'm grateful to have taken that online because I had a, some friends who did it in person here where I live. And that was just a whole lot of drama. And so I always find it interesting, no matter what the, the, the level of orchestration of a connecting of women is there some type of of drama of people judging one another when we're supposed to be getting together and accepting and loving on one another granted i have had opposite the opposite too in in this new reality right but it, there's a lot of that you know, and people um, feeling like their opinions are valid in another person's life when they, you, you don't know 
a person's life, all right? And, and creates this whole aspect of women then not feeling safe to be vulnerable with one another. Like, what, what is that? That shit gotta stop. <laughs> it really gotta stop because it's, it's, it's more, it does more harm. It does harm, not more harm than good. It is harmful, period. Okay, but I digress. So I went through that and I took some time um, getting certified in food nutrition and raw foods and things like that. And eventually I came to this place like, you know, everybody cannot live one way. You know, people in the spiritual community take this whole oneness shit way too far. Way, just way too far. Like <laughs> everybody is not the same and in the slightest, you know, and it, it just put me in the space of like um, wanting to resist and rebel many things. So eventually the same friend who introduced me to the other school, she had shared this, this couple with me right and because she reminded her this couple reminded her of me and my husband because we similar but we not all right and here's where we get into this so I started following the wife and you know she's talking about a lot of stuff a lot of stuff sound good and everything like that and when I got pregnant with my son in 20 2016 um I decided to join her course her because she had like a little a little school for feminine teachings for women you know so I got into this course and um I did that for a little while because I was always feeling like something needed to be fixed something was wrong you know like oh I need to be a better wife I am I do I have the right tools to be the mother it is that I want to be right because I'm in this place of all of a sudden doing things differently than anybody in my world has ever done anything, you know, like I, um, my, my husband, he moved here from Baltimore, um, he's 11 years my senior, um, you know, it's, it's just different, and granted for some that may not be a big deal, but it's different to have somebody in my life, in my world, <laughs> that I grew up in for someone to come that far to be with them to the age difference you know and it's different and he's different he is he different he not for nothing all right <laughs> for anything any kind of um um way of of moving of being that is that that steals and takes away your sovereignty all right he not for it all right, he got an opinion on it and is usually right. All right, and, and when that presents itself in people's world who are used to reality going one way, it creates a lot of cognitive dissonance and a lot of um, distaste. So with that, um, I felt like I needed to make sure I had the tools and right knowing and everything like that to do what it is how, what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do without thinking that you want to do this. You already know what you want to do. So you going to do it how you want to do it. Do it how you want to do it. You know, and um, I had my son, I had a home birth. It was unassisted. It was just me, my husband and my doula. And we came together and brought my baby Earthside. Okay. And that was a blessing for real you know and it, it was it was different but feeling like um it took me some time to get to that space of be, being like okay i'm gonna do this because that was my plan all along um before my husband and i got together before we came together here in like a person you know he's like well what do you want well how do you how you want to live life and i told him he's like all right me too let's do this you know i wanted to be a stay-at-home wife, stay-at-home mother, and, and take care of home and family, and, um, you know, help people the best way that I could, you know, through whatever it is I was learning, through the things that helped me in my life, but I still hadn't really gotten to that place of 
seeing what it is that was truly meant for me to be sharing with others. So I felt like me being in this space, like it's gonna, oh, it's gonna help me connect to myself more. I'm gonna be able to tap into the truth of me, not realizing that I was already there. <laughs> I was already there, you know, and just really caught up in 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 the outside world and the, the, what the spiritual community does really well is have you thinking that you don't know that you don't know what you're doing that you're not doing it the right way as if there was ever a written there to be a right way outside of what has been written in the bible right which is always so misinterpreted but we're not gonna go that that's not here so now I was in this group for this, this all went over a span of four years. Bashar is four now. So, and I, well, so maybe three years, I guess, maybe. Um, Cause I joined in 2016, I left because I just didn't want to pay for that anymore. Um, and then we were moving and had a baby and everything like that. And um, so, yeah, I separated myself from that. But back in, what's this, 2016, 2017, maybe 2018, um, the lady, she had started a new um, program. And it was to help women uh, heal, basically, you know, and help them um, in however way, as far as, you know, connecting them to their cycles and getting them aligned to their feminine energy and everything like that and all kinds of things and so that got me back into the school the feminine school right but every time i got into this school the cognitive dissonance was so strong so absolutely so strong all right um it was always really hard for me it was uncomfortable it was really uncomfortable, you know, and because it always got you in this place of not trusting yourself and feeling like the choices and the, the, even the thoughts that you were having were incorrect. The feelings were incorrect. And it's just like, how are you to tell me who it is, how it is that I feel, you know, and but I still stayed because I felt like if I didn't stay that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do what it is that I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. Not still not realizing that I was already doing that. All right. So after that, um, I ended up leaving again because I was just like, all right, I'm, I'm just not feeling this anymore. I'm just do what it is I'm going to do. And, you know, whatever, mind my business. So then it was maybe a year later, I think, because I never left the Facebook group, right? So I would still be seeing like the offerings and everything like that. And there was like this wife school she had done. And so I was like, oh, I need to do this because I need to be a better wife, right? Um, I want to be able to excel and do everything it is that I need, to, I want to do right right and I was talking to my husband about this and he was like what he's like you don't need that you are you I love you the way you are like I love our life kind of thing and for some odd reason that was just not enough for me um you know the thing is I'm not easily influenced but when something is in along the lines of right of being right being good you know, it, it draws me in, it pulls me in like a, like a moth to a flame, you know, and a, a desire to be able to do good and, and be right. And that also, that, that taught me that I needed to get out of that place of always needing to be right, because uh, at this point I'm at right now, and all the things that I know, and I'll share that as I get there, is that it's like I know so much and still realize, damn, like I don't know a thing. This world is wild. All right. So, but I digress. So I wanted to do that and I was feeling some kind of way because I couldn't do that, like not with him or anything, but within myself, you know, but it was, they wanted like $3,000 or something to do this. And even 
even the the women's health program that shit was like two thousand dollars you know and then so what we ended up doing was joining like this lifetime membership that they had right that that shit was thousands of dollars y'all okay and i know y'all probably ask like why because my husband he was like these people are frauds you know they 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 not who they claim to be and it's interesting because what drew me into them after my friend had shared is because like oh they was living on land they was helping people you know living life and and being able to do what it is that they were doing and be able to have their own land grow their food have their chickens and that's the life that i i i I see for my for my family that's the life we see for our family you know so it called to me but little did I know, did I not, did I realize until like much later down the line, so I was fully about to separate myself from them, is that that shit wasn't even true. Like they was living off of, that's the thing about a lot of these spiritual self-help gurus, all right? They come through by way of MLM, multi-level marketing, facilitated by some law of attraction uh, jargon, all right, you know, and, you know, law of attraction, it's not even a universal law, but whatever, so, um, anyways, so we, we, we basically, we paid these people hundreds, thousands of dollars, you know, till eventually, Um, once we got into this lifetime program, I was just like, you know, all right, I'm done, you know, because they, they go about, you know, talking about how you have, you have to be doing things this way, that if you're not doing it this way, then it's not right, and um, it's not going to work, and oh, you're not manifesting because, and it's just like, what do you mean, and once I left there, like, things, like everything that was for us started coming to us rapidly. (laughs) So just being there was a blockage in itself, you know, and um, interesting enough, they call themselves, they consider themselves to be archons now. And if you know, you know, I'm not going to get into that right now. But, um, but it it makes sense, because they they feel like that they um, have the answers and put it in short version, these are people who who hold the order. They keep the order, right, of the way of things. They kind of remove the whole identity and aspect of identity and self, self, uh, individuality, right, um, and doing things in the way that you want, right. This, they, they really operate in the whole boule kind of, uh, aspect of things, anything that is of like fraternity sorority that's that too all right so if you didn't know that that's something to look into all right um it's a lot of information the 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 guy steve copley jr who i shared he has those those nutrition nutrition supplements from africa his father steve copley he gives a lot of information um about this he was assistant to the mayor i believe in the 80s and he was like on cnn and all kind of stuff exposing (laughs) <laughs> shit <laughs> okay and my husband he purchased all of the videos so I'm gonna see if I can talk to him about doing like a a watch party or something where we can all come together and just like talk about this or just watch it you know because it's all very interesting very enlightening and very true you know so but anyways um you know I ended up deciding that like hey I'm just gonna separate myself from these people I'm gonna move away from these people and you know my husband used to always say like that shit is a cult you know it's very Nixon in nature if you don't know what Nixon is look that up because it's something all right and you know they they just people People are in this reality, especially these these spiritual leaders, these self-help gurus, they have, when you want power, 
all right, when you want to control some shit, it's usually because you don't you feel like you ain't got nothing, you can't control yourself. You have a hard time controlling your life. And these people, they they are so they they are soul harvesters. Without you, they cannot go. They cannot thrive. Okay, they don't work. All right, without your energy, all right, what what I think it was a mantra I heard of whatever, um, or maybe it's a song, I need your energy you know or however it is however they go about that um however that song goes that these are the old type of people you know and they soul capturers they hold you hostage in bondage and you are meant to praise them right so that other people can come in and have their souls harvested like because that's really what it is at the end of the day because they ended up having this program for marriage and they basically wanted you to let go of everything of you and that's how it begins you know you 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 basically selling your soul to allow someone else to tell you what it is that you're here to do and that's what that archon based thought form is all right um all right these are people who who know darkness right but really they 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 perpetuate and, and push false light, Luciferianism, okay? And they, um, it's just a bunch of dogma, you know? They, they can't stand light. They too sensitive to the true light, to real light, right? And and can't can't function. And through that, they need your light, all right? They, they, need, your, they need your love to feel them, to be able to live, right? Because this, at the end of the day, is about power and money for them. They need to live these good lives, right? And, and they, they, everything is based on trauma. It's based on traumatic experience. And you, you need this because you need to know how to heal, come up out of this trauma. You need to be able to move on instead of just actually like just, just facing self. Everything is within. There is nothing outside of you that can can serve you and, and help you move forward better than tapping in, right? Your ancestors are always gonna be there for you to guide you, all right? This is a people who wanna be called your mother, okay? Wanna be called, you know, some type of, be some type of spiritual parental kind of who seek that, who need that right, to lead and guide other people to God knows where, who knows, right, because you don't really know where it is that you're going, right, and it's usually people who don't really, who have a hard time really thinking for themselves, who don't, who are, who are for the group, you know, and it's nothing wrong with group, it's, I think it's a wonderful thing, but if you cannot come through and be yourself without having to bend, then that's the issue, so yes, y'all, I was in a cult for four years and it took me, um, granted, I seen it as that at the beginning, but I was like, oh, you know, this is a good thing. I'm just learning some information here, you know, but once you get to this place where it's like, can I be me? You you need me to peddle your, your, your propaganda? And like, no. You know, and, and that's the thing, you know, signing up people to be affiliates with them, you know, because they operate strongly in that multi-level marketing thing. And that's really how they gain their finances. Um, you know, and these are usually people who come out of the corporate world, who take that corporate knowledge and, and utilize it. And it, it's, it's magic, really. They took this corporate knowledge and, and transmuted it into spiritual uh, knowledge, right? Utilize those corporate tools and you and, and took it there to build something, right? To be able to capitalize off of it and give it to you in layers. So you can keep paying into it and into it because you, no matter what level you get to, it's like, oh, there's more I can know. There's, there's more here. How can I learn more? How, how, what, how much more of myself can I learn? How much more of what they have to teach can, can support me versus you just going within. The wisdom is within. 
the high priestess tells us, the hermit tells us, the, high, the hierophant, he lets us know that the wisdom comes through, through experience, through as long as you're paying attention to the lessons it is that you are gaining through these things, you know, and with this whole internet, granted, it's not cult like Jim Jones or no uh, Charles Manson kind of thing, you know, but in a sense it is, it's some, it's dark, you know, is, um, and not dark in a sense of, oh, let me get into the depths of me. Let me, let me see my shadows. Let me transmute and transform my shadows. But it's just dark. It, it's the whole, um, what you see, the, 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 those who, who gather for orgies in, in, um, things of that nature not that there's and you know at the end of the day it's not really anything wrong with any of this right but it can be very harmful for some especially people who are very sensitive I had a friend who was in this and she got an attunement from these people and got very sick after this where she had to go get healing from a a, a shaman all right <laughs> and it was like so sick where it was like spinal fluid leaking kind of sickness you know and it's just like you got to take care when you want to evolve you know when you want to learn when you want to expand and grow it's Jupiter day I'm sharing this wow you know you really want to go where it feels good if you're feeling conflicted if you're feeling anxious if you're feeling uncomfortable that's not where you want to go because it's not going to, it's just not, that's not it. It's not it. You know, there are so many other plethora of ways to connect to you, to be in you, to love on you. And most of the time people outside of you are not the ones that have the answers to that. They may have tools to be able to help you connect better to yourself but if they they come with like a um a, a pandora's box of here's your life you take this that's usually not not what it is it's usually not um what's right granted at the same time some people need that and that's what i've come to see some people just need that you know um and, and i get that I get it. Some people need it. And, you know, who am I to judge? Like at one time I thought I needed it too. <laughs> we eventually you realize, you know, that you don't because there are a lot of women who I've connected with who've left because we all came to the same conclusion. Oh shit, we was in a cult. These people was trying to, to, to harvest us, <laughs> you know, and um, make us believe that we were not a fully aware of who it is that we are, that we weren't sure of ourselves, that we needed to be told our place and our purpose in this life, in this world. And can't nobody tell you that. Can't nobody tell you that, right? That's why I, that's why I love tarot because it allows you to um, see your own subconscious, see, connect with that. That's why I um, really love hypnotherapy because it shows you how much you are in control. You are the guide, you are the ruler, you are the orchestrator in your life, right? You don't need anybody else to do that for you, right? And in human design, we learn that we are forever being conditioned, conditioned from birth, right? From our family to the people who we surround ourselves with, to the things it is that we watch on a daily basis, right? So that's why it's so important, you know, that whole who we keep around us and what we take in kind of thing. Granted, some of us can do that and still fully be ourselves, but in some aspect, we're still being influenced to some regard, you know, it's just a matter of us and taking the time to see, you know, what is really and truly for us and connecting with those who, who know what it's like to, to, I don't know, I guess, stand on your own in a sense. Granted, I don't feel like that people should have, feel like that they need to do anything on their own because I feel like it's so many of us, we can all really support one another in the best ways that we can, you know, but yeah, you guys, 
that happened. <laughs> I experienced that experience and it taught me a lot. It taught me um, to trust myself more. It showed me that I already knew because these were people who were, when I left, I seen talking about things that me and my husband have been talking about for years that we had not just been sharing out of the fact of like, okay, you got to let people live their life kind of thing. And now they're utilizing this to, again, push and propagate their agenda, you know, and it's just like, yo, the world is fucking crazy. All right. And there's a lot of people using um, manipulation tactics in order to get you to coincide with what it is that they do out of the fact that they need your energy. All right. Because without it, they can't function. They probably can't live. They can't make no money without it. Granted, they probably could. They could go get regular jobs and work for people. Um, but when you when you have that much knowledge, when you have that much knowing, and you can see the ways in which to use it, you can pretty much do anything, right? And people are so, a majority are so disconnected, right? It, it takes a while to finally see if you, if some ever do, because a lot don't. A lot do not see. And that's really just the reality that we live in. And like something that kind of has to be accepted, but at the same time doesn't mean that you don't have to not talk about it. <laughs> it's okay to share it. And some people are gonna listen and a lot of people not because cognitive dissonance is definitely something that creates a lot of um, uncomfortability within you, right? And this is not, and I'm not talking about cognitive dissonance of the soul, I'm talking about cognitive dissonance of what it is that you've been conditioned into knowing and to learning that all of that has not been true, all right? Because it's a lot of shit that's not true. It's a lot of shit that's not true. And that we kind of just have to, that we've been forced to live up under, right? In a way that um, has us given away our power to people, to beings, to thought forms, to emotions that um, would better best serve us if we apply, if we let our energy be ours and, and really be in that and of that, and of ourselves, you know? And it definitely does not take um, someone who took a bunch of knowledge that they learned, turned it into their own rhetoric all right, telling you that is right. Because I think a lot of times we don't realize that some of the things that we come into that we learn is just for us. Everything that we have is not meant to be shared with other people, right? Because sometimes it can only work for us. That, that's that thing about being in the, an individual, right? That's why it's not always um, helpful to take what it is that has served you and feel like the world need it, needs it. Because sometimes the world doesn't need it. Sometimes it's just you on your own personal path, on your own personal journey who needs it, right? Because then you get people signing up for shit that they did not sign up for, right? And, and sometimes that comes back to backfire on you, <laughs> right? So... Um, and not in a, not in a healthy way, not in a healthy way, you know, so yeah, you guys, I just want to share this little story time with y'all. Um, I hope y'all doing well. I hope y'all finding y'all's way. I hope that y'all enjoying y'all's journey and y'all's path. I hope that all that is for you finds you, that you find it, okay, and that you trust in it and have faith in it and believe in it and know that you do not have to spend thousands of dollars to get the answers it is that you need, all right? And that if somebody is telling you that what you that you're not doing it the right way, that you are willing to question that shit because what you mean? What is the right way? Is there wrong? Is there a wrong way? Because <laughs> at this point, I'm convinced that what it, what is meant for a person is meant for them. What is meant for your family is meant for your family, you know, and, and that's just that on that. All right. So 
Yeah, guys, I hope that y'all find this helpful. Thank you for sitting here with me. I hope that it inspires you to do you, all right, and not feel like that you need to be told otherwise. And um, be able to be in that space of discernment of seeing who it is that you need to listen, be listening to, who it is that you need to be connecting with, all right, and allowing you to be yourself, right? Because at the end of all of this, what it just showed me is that girl be yourself level up but be yourself because everything else is just a facade for real people out here peddling illusions <laughs> and the truth is within you all right you guys so i love y'all thanks for being here with me and listening to this little story time and yes i'll see y'all tomorrow on friday happy new moon bye